different areas I'm going to talk about here. We're going to start with the team judge, what your roles and responsibilities are. I got a lot of questions asked at the last chapter meet. Hey, what's a team judge do? Can I be an observer judge or do I want to be a team judge? I don't know. So I figured we'd level set everybody and we'll also go over tabulation. So if you've never tabbed before, you'll understand what it takes to tab. <coughs> All right. So first thing a team judge needs to do is show up, be on time, and go to the meet judging or to the uh, the meet judging meeting. So that's the one that I typically will put on early morning on Saturday at our particular event. Be on time. That's the, the critical piece, right? If you're not on time and you've been assigned a specific spot, you may not get that spot if you show up late. You need to go to the team leader judging meeting. That occurs after the after the meet judging meeting, and that's where the team leaders have, have you. They'll come. They'll talk to you. They'll tell you where everything's at. They'll tell you how to proceed. What your team? What particular area you're going to uh, you're going to work on? Um, in most likelihood, you'll be paired up. Most likely, I have been to chapter meets where there were not enough judges, and you may wind up being a judge on your own. That's a very difficult situation to be in because uh, you're trying to move through all the vehicles quickly, be able to get everything accomplished. It does help to have a partner. Um, the interesting other thing to note is that the team leader may be pulled in to do team judging as well. And when that happens, um, there's patience that's needed by both the team judges and the owners in this particular case, right? Because a team leader is trying to be a team leader, he's also trying to be a judge and coordinate back and forth. So if there's an issue that comes up, a question, comment, concern, the team, just be patient. The, the team leader will get to it as quickly as he can um, to try and answer all of the, uh, the concerns that are there. So acquire your judging tools. Those are typically be on the, uh, on the judging field at some point. Uh, we actually have a couple of uh, milk crates that we put all the judging manuals in. There's also um, uh, containers that'll have clipboards, flashlights, mirrors, and then typically there's a box of pencil out. The big thing here is to minimize opportunity for damage to the vehicle. All right, we all love these cars. We don't want to see anybody walking home with a scratch or taking home a scratch car because somebody was a little careless at a point. And that means remove your belt or move your belt buckle to the side. Typically what I do is I pull it apart, I move it over to my hip because I'm not going to be leaning over with my hip up against the fender. Okay, so move that out of the way. Take your cell phone off. That's another thing that can get caught into many of the different things, especially if you're chassis judge. Having a cell phone on is not a good thing when you're on the floor. Uh, talk to the owner, request fender covers or, or towels. So you can put them on the fenders, you can put them on the door sills, you can put them um, in the trunk opening for those applications where you would need those. So anything that we can do to protect the exterior finish or interior of the car is definitely beneficial. You may want to have your own towel. So you can throw it on the floor in the event that you are, are leaning down, kneeling down onto the floor, or you happen to be a chassis judge, and the floor is typically not the cleanest. It comes in real handy when you're in grass, by the way. I have judged chassis in the grass. That's a very difficult situation to do because you really can't get a good feel for what's going on. There's not a nice flat under, uh, underground area under the car. So. All right, next item is to meet the owner. Okay. So, the big thing is to, to put the owner at ease, right? We want to make sure that everybody who's on the team walks up and is introduced to the owner. Okay, that way the owner knows who's judging, what specific section, and who the people are that are helping that particular judging team. Um, note that the owners can be team judges as well. However, there's one caveat there. Owners are not allowed to judge their own cars, right? Makes sense. <coughs> and if you do catch an owner judging his own car, I, I will struggle with that. So I will do every effort as, as the judging chairman to make sure that does not occur. So the thing you want to do is explain the area where you plan to judge. Acquire the judging sheets for that specific area so that you've got your form that you need to do. Um, request removal of any components that might help you judge. Typically, in the owner's meeting, the chapter Judging chairman will come in and tell everybody, get your spare tires down and out of or out of the trunk. Remove your distributor covers if you have those for radio cars. Remove your air cleaners to help with the mechanical judging team. Remove the jack if it's in the, in the storage tray, things like that. And many times there are opportunities for tools that we need. I typically carry a small toolbox so that those types of items can come out pretty easily. But please make sure that you inform the owner that they need to remove certain components. The other thing that as a team judge you need to do is to sign the judge's quality survey. Each owner gets a specific single sheet. Make sure you put your name on there so the owner can provide feedback for you as well. 
All right, now we move into the actual meat. Now we're judging. So the next thing you want to do is you want to judge the car with the major judging process for originality if you're in one of the four static areas that we judge, right? Uh, that's going to include not at least inspecting the VIN tag and the trim tag if applicable. Basically, the VIN tag is going to give you an idea of what the day a manufacturer of the vehicle was. That's very useful when you're looking for dates or understanding if certain items show up um, on the car. Uh, service parts labels, certification labels, we talked about that a year ago, depends on the application. Service labels are for C4s. Service uh, uh, certification labels come in in about the mid 70s and go all the way through the C4 generation. We want to use our CDCIF configuration date completeness installation and finish process that I've been uh, providing feedback on in the various locations that are the, the topics that we've talked about. Apply standard deductions when necessary. If you go to the judging. To the judging guide, there are a series of standard deductions. Typically, the team leader will have a copy of the standard deductions, or we can find those on the field. You want to make sure that uh, those are applied fairly. Agree on an appropriate deduction with your judging partner. So if you, as you work in teams, if you're going to take one here or one there or two there, one of you aren't, isn't saying, I want to take five because of this, and the other one says, I think it's only worth two. Make sure you agree with that, because the last thing we want is to have inconsistency when you walk up to the owner. Okay? You do not want to be inconsistent in your, in your uh, uh, conversation with the owner. Remember, consistency is key. You take one because the headlight doesn't work on one car. Don't take five on the next car for the same type of failure. All right? Be consistent. That's the biggest thing I can tell you. If, again, that will help every owner because owners will compare. Hey, my car had this. Your car had that. Why did I get three and you only got two? Right? We don't want any kind of inconsistency. We don't want any favoritism on the field. We want to be as objective as possible. In all cases, when there is a doubt in your mind, whether that's the right part and it's configured correctly, if you don't know, then if it goes to the owner, give the owner the, the benefit of the doubt. All right? If you don't know, the benefit goes to the owner. A couple of other things that uh, I will enforce, ask the owner to move or remove items as needed. The last thing you want to do is to go in there and pull on that knob on the clock and the thing comes out in your hand. What do you do? A, you can't check it for operation because you just broke it or you didn't know it was going to break. If it comes out in the owner's hands, then you, then you can justify it. Now the owner's got something that says, I don't know if it worked. You. It came out in your hand, not mine. Okay. The other thing, um, you know, the big thing is if you're moving stuff, things can get scratched. If you have the owner doing it and they scratch it, you are not to blame. You are not at fault. Again, that's what we want to make sure everybody understands. Do not move or remove any material at all opportunities. If, you are, if the owner is off doing something else and you do need to move something, be, make sure that you have conversed that with the owner. All right? That it is okay to open a door. Right? And that the owner knows that the door's got enough swing that it's not going to hit the 74, it's park reference. If the owner's not willing to remove something and you can't judge it, you can't give them the points for that particular component because you can't judge it. It's no different than somebody leaves a distributor shield on a radio car and you can't see the, the distributor cap, right? You, you can't judge it, therefore you, you, if you can't see it and if the owner's been given the request to remove it, then they will lose the points for that particular component and it's their call. Yeah. Also, the last item on the list, no sitting in the vehicle in the interior. Whether you're doing operations judging or whether you're doing interior judging, please do not sit in the vehicle. All right, I'm going to stress that when we get to the chapter meet here in June. I don't want to see anybody touching anything unless they've got specific written permission from the owner, and I don't want to see anybody sitting in the vehicles. Okay. Another item here for team judges to properly fill in the judging sheet. Everybody know how to fill in a judging sheet? As you get the judging sheet, you'll see these various line items. If you're going to have no deduction, you put a slash. That means that that particular area is clean. If you have deductions, you're going to put a number. If you put a deduction, if you take a deduction for anything, make sure that there's a reason in there. I've gone through many judging sheets. Things have been deducted, no specific items. That creates the uh, opportunity for us to take it back to you and say, why did you take a particular deduction? The other uh, comment here is add positive comments as well. That can help go a long way when you're having a conversation with the owner when you're going over everything. Right? Find something that you really like that you know is difficult to find. 
make sure you put a positive comment, right? As you can see there, uh, smiley faces work well, or nice whatever component particular item is. All right, reviewing the completed judging sheet, make sure you do that prior to reviewing with the owner. That way you can catch, oh, I forgot to put the two in for the horn deduction, all right? That way it, it makes it through. You're not sitting there trying to talk to the owner and you come up and say, Richard, here's your stuff. Uh, wait, hold on. I got to go over here and I got to figure out what I'm going to deduct, right? That doesn't work real well. Okay, so make sure you review the judging sheet prior to handing that in. And make sure you sign the judging sheet prior to talking to the owner. You will ask the owner to sign the judging sheet at the end, but make sure you take care of all that paperwork. Review the sheet with the owner specifically. Try and answer questions as necessary, but remember, you're on a time crunch. You only have a specific amount of time to do what you need to do. All right, we'll talk about the pace that you need to keep. The, the big issue is if the owner wants to take an hour and a half to discuss why part A doesn't conform to what you think the particular configuration is, ask them to delay or defer that, that discussion, all right, until after you are done with your judging, your judging requirement, okay? Try to resolve any disputes over reductions. This is the first line of negotiation and communication. If an owner pulls it out and says, here's what it says in the book, make sure you, you read the book and confirm with the owner where you think you're at. If you have information or understanding that's different than that, the owner doesn't agree, then it's time to escalate. Okay, and then it's up to the owner to escalate it to the team leader. All right? And the team leader may come and converse with you on why that particular deduction was taken or what the, the thought is from the team leader in that particular area. The other thing that uh, I would recommend strongly is to foster a calm and positive atmosphere. If you're calm, the owner will calm down. If you're positive, the owner will take it as a positive experience. Remember, the owner set, sitting there, that may be their first time, they may be nervous, they may be defensive because you're picking apart something that they took a specific length of time to restore, or you're picking apart something that they believe to be very original and they've spent a lot of money on. So the, the more positive and calm atmosphere we can create during these interactions, the better it's going to be. We want a pace judging process to complete all the cars in the appropriate time. Remember, eight is the maximum number. We don't typically have eight. There's been a couple of years where I pushed eight in and it's very tough to get a team to go through that, all right? Um, you've got about eight hours to do this, right? We yeah. typically start somewhere between 8 and 8.30, and we like to be done for 4.30. So you got eight hours, right? So if I do the math, that's an hour a car. Oh, yeah, and remember, there's typically 20, 30 minutes in there that you're going to want to have lunch. I would rec highly recommend that you factor that into everything as well. So, All right. Turn in your completed judging sheet to the team leader if you finish early. I only had two cars. I've got them both done. It's 9.30. Stick around. I'm sure there's opportunities. If you got to go home, we understand. My recommendation, stick around because chances are you're going to be tapped on the shoulder. Hey, can you come over and work on this 86 Corvette because we, are going to, we don't have enough people at the present time to be able to do that. All right. I've done that many, many times, and many, and most everybody's been willing to accommodate me. Even if you don't know that particular area, it's good to, to stick around. A couple of key things. Remember, not only are you there to judge, but you're there to learn as well. Okay. Be flexible. Again, you may not get the year or class that you want. You may not get the area of judging that you want. Depends on what's available in the field itself. Okay. Be open to training or helping those who have less experience, not only the, your other partner, but also observer judges, okay? Don't let it slow you down to the point where you're now four hours a car, but if there are certain questions, please make sure that you try and do your best to answer those questions, all right? To remember, when you get through with all of this, it gets you two judging points towards the judging process, right? The judging goal. That's for a chapter event, all right? Okay, let's move on. Observer judge. Let's talk about what an observer judge does. Okay, observer judge has similar types of responsibilities as the team judge. Number one, you need to attend the chapter judging meeting. Okay, so when the, the chapter uh, judging chairman comes up and starts talking, at least you're now introduced and understand what's going to occur for that day. And again, be on time for that. You're going to go to the team leader meeting. 
right? This is where you're going to have the opportunity to be assigned to a team. Um, and I recommend that you be flexible. Again, you may not get the year in class that you want. You may not get the area that you want. But be flexible in those cases. Minimize opportunities for vehicle damage. That's pretty much anybody who's on, on the judging field. All right? Remove your belt buckles, move them to the side, make sure that you get the cell phones off, meet the owner, make sure you're available for the judging team introduction. That allows the owner to know that you're sitting there with these two other individuals judging the chassis of a 61. During the judging process, you are an observer. That's why they call it observer judge. Okay? You're there to watch, listen, and learn, and you're going to learn the matrix judging process. Although you may have an opinion, please do not share your views with the judging team unless requested. And you will hear that comment at regionals and nationals. Again, remember, almost every one of those classes are filled. They've got eight cars. They've got eight hours to do it. I was a master judge. I went to Boston. I was an observer judge. Roy Siner came up and said, you're here to watch. Don't interfere. Okay? Now, there, you may be requested to help but don't offer your opinion unless you request it. Do not remove or move anything on the vehicles. No sitting in the vehicle or on the spare or any other item that might be associated with the vehicle while the judging is occurring. Here's a couple of things that you may get asked as an observer judge. You may be asked to read from the judging manual out loud. Tell me what this particular item should be in the mechanical section. I need to know what the, what the casting number is for the exhaust manifold. You may have to go through there and find that and tell the judge. All right? Don't be afraid of that. The other thing that you may be asked for is to record the deductions and observations on the judging sheet. Okay? Mark it down. I want to slice. I want to take off one. This is why I want to do it. And remember, you got to properly fill in the judging sheet. And I'm going to go over that again. Again, if you're putting, if you're filling out the judging sheet, slices are no deductions. Put in the numbers for the deductions, but make sure that there's always something in that judging line. You're responsible for that if you've been asked to do that, right? The other thing, observers may, observer judges may move from team to team, so you may want to work in chassis on C1 and go over in the afternoon and work on interior on C1s, okay? Again, this is to help to gain broader exposure for the entire judging process. It gets you into different areas. So if you're going to do that, I recommend don't move in the middle, right? Oh, I'm in, I got ready to write down the front suspension information. I want to go work on the interiors. Finish the car that you're working on and then request to move to the team there, okay? Remember again, you're there to learn. Be open to the request of the team judges, the team leader, the meet judging chairman, as well as the owner. If somebody asks you to do something, be open and help if you can. So. If you're approached to be a team judge, consider accepting so that you get the full level of responsibility as well as the extra point, okay? Um, remember that every effort will be made to pair you up with somebody who's knowledgeable in that particular area, okay? But to have a second set of eyes, ears, mind to go over and say, does this look like what the book's telling us? It's always very, very useful. Now, if you complete all of this at the end of the day, you get one point towards you. Tabulators. All right. Tabulators. Tabulators <coughs> can come in and they'll, tab the, they'll attend the tabulator team meeting. There will be a uh, chief tabulator or, or judging, or a, a, a meet, basically the same thing as the meet judging chairman. It will be the tabulation team leader. Um, typically, the tabulation starts an hour to two hours after judging starts. Why? They don't have any judges yet. Very good. You're sitting there going, I'd like to punch the numbers in the calculator. But also, tabulators may be required to stay one to two hours after judging, right, to be able to complete all the necessary paperwork. For the tabulation teams typically consist of four to six individuals, and that'll be a tabulator team leader that I talked about, plus three or more tabulators. There's reasons why we need that many. The other critical thing, tabulation occurs in a separate room. It's not done on the judging field. And the primary reason why is we want to keep the owners <coughs> and team judges um, away from the tabulation area. We don't want any additional interference during the tabulation process. So the team leader or the meet judging chairman will provide completed judging sheets to the tabulation team. That's basically all the people that are supposed to be in that particular area to be on the tabulation team. Judging sheets are not to be shared with the owners after submission for tabulation. Okay. 
The owners will get those scoring sheets back at the end of the completion of the meet after the awards are presented, typically one to two weeks later. So the tabulators also need to acquire the tabulation tools. That's a tabulator, pencil, eraser, paper clip staples, pencil sharpeners, summary form, copy, donuts, tables, whatever. So here's the critical thing about tabulation. Every score sheet must be tabulated twice. Why do we tabulate it twice? We tabulate it twice by a different tabulator so that we can provide a double, double check of the results and consistency. In case somebody makes a, a calculation error, if you think the IRS is bad, Try having an owner call the, the meat judging chairman after he gets the cheats back and say, you, miss, you missed three points over here and that would have gotten me a top flight. I don't want to ever have to answer that question. Okay. Each tabulator must initial the scoring sheet upon completion. The score sheets are transferred. Basically, the score sheet folder is transferred to the ju judging summary sheet for each vehicle. So that's the summary sheet that, that the owner is going to get back that shows every one of the particular areas. They also include the mileage points that go on there. And then that information is transferred over to the chief, to the judging summary sheet for the meet, and that's the information that winds up in the national database. Right. So I input at the end of each particular chapter meet, I put in car A got this particular percentage. Or so tabulation team must confirm judging sheets are properly filled in. That's exactly what Harry was talking about. Right. So again, this is our example. If there's an omission that's found on the judging sheet, that means that. The judge missed it, the team leader missed it, the main judging chairman missed it, and got to the tabulator. They missed something. We need to get that back out to the team so that we can get it corrected. Okay? Go back out and say, why did you take two off? Well, I didn't write in that it was it had it was rusted age or missing paint or whatever. We want to make sure that the owner gets as much descriptive information so that they can work forward. Tabulators are not allowed to discuss judging results with owners or judges. Okay, so the tabulators don't get to come out and say such and such got a 92.6 to either the, t to either the, uh, the judges or to the owner of the car, right? Typically that feedback goes only to the owner. We try and keep some level of discretion within the organization. You complete all of this, you get five tabulation points per event per day, all right? Tabulation points are different than judging points. There is a master tabulator set of awards similar to what you saw with the jacket over there for Master Judge Awards. Captain of the Video